and people wonder why us millennials run and hide when somebody knocks on the door. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2008 horror thriller, The Strangers. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations. So be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. The Strangers stars Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman and was directed by Brian Bertino. It tells the story of a couple staying at a rural vacation home who find themselves being terrorized by masked strangers. Much like comedy, horror is an incredibly subjective thing. What terrifies one person might have absolutely no effect on the next. We all feel fear, but the exact causes of that fear vary from person to person, which makes horror a notoriously tricky genre to do well because you can't please, or in this case scare, everyone. A lot of horror films scare people with unbelievable things. Ghosts or other supernatural entities, aliens, monstrous creatures, fears that are illogical, things that we know aren't real but are still creeped out by the idea of. On the other hand, some horror movies attempt to scare us with real things, actual animals or other natural horrors, serial killers, people in masks. These movies are often still tinged with a hint of movie magic fantasy, or follow genre convention rules such as those that Scream drew our attention to, but every now and then you come across a horror film that stays away from those elements, those things that let you say, well, it's just a movie. Instead, they present something that's potentially much scarier, something that could very well not be just a movie, something like The Strangers. Understanding motivations goes a long way in alleviating fear. Something might still scare you, but if you know what it is, know why it's happening, there's some degree of comfort that comes along with that, however small. But if you don't know who or what, don't know why, it's scarier, because then your mind has to fill in those answers. So even though the premise of an unknown masked intruder picking people to terrorize at random is simple, it's scarily effective because it's believable. Unlike a killer clown from outer space or a possessed doll, it's feasible. It feels like it could really happen. And because of the randomness of the violence, it feels like it could happen to anyone, including you. And that's the real genius of a film like this. It's a fairly bare bones home invasion thriller whose simplicity is easy to dismiss at first glance, but it's just realistic and random enough of a situation that it makes the audience think, hey, this could be me. The characters, the victim characters, are believably set up in the beginning of the film. They feel like they could be real people with real normal problems, and you kind of, maybe, care about them. But neither of them are given much characterization. But that's the point. They're blank slates that you can project yourself or your family or friends onto, which makes the horror of it hit a lot closer to home. So it's likely that as you watch the movie, you'll be constantly wondering what you would do in the same situation. Well, chances are good, probably not what the characters Kristen and James do. It's unfortunately kind of par for the course with a lot of horror movies, but the characters in this film make an awful lot of dumb decisions. And some of these go beyond the typical don't go in there or look behind you things that usually make you want to yell at the screen. Some of the things they do just make no sense whatsoever in the situation, so it can sometimes be a bit frustrating. But it does help heighten the tension and showcase the sheer randomness of this attack. That said, if I were in that situation, I just would have never opened the door. She wouldn't have even had the opportunity to ask me if Tamara was there. I know it's become a bit of a running joke and meme at this point, but I will be the first to admit that there's a lot of truth behind the millennial anxiety jokes. You know, the things that we find stressful that other generations don't think twice about, like talking on the phone or dealing with unexpected guests at the door. Whatever the reason, a lot of us millennials do have these anxieties, and this movie not only tapped into that, but was released at a time when a good chunk of us were coming of age. I'll tell you though, this would have been a much shorter movie if millennials had been the lead characters, cause nobody would have ever answered that door. The Strangers isn't a terrifying or even particularly scary movie, but it is a very effectively creepy and tense film. Things start off calmly and almost mundanely before greatly escalating, and a lot of this is thanks to the technical elements. 
The constant shaky cam is definitely more than a little irritating. The camera's constantly bobbling and swaying like it's the killer's point of view, but this begins during the slowly unfolding interpersonal drama at the start of the film, long before the strangers even arrive. The 70s style house is a nice visual homage to many of the films of that era that inspired this movie, but the sound design is where this movie really succeeds on a technical level. The knocks and thumps and bangs, the earned jump scare screams, the ominousness of a simple record player, the labored breathing of the strangers in their masks. It makes it really immersive and all the more creepy. I saw this movie when it first came out, and even though I used to go to the movies weekly, even back then, this has always stood out as a particularly memorable theatrical experience for me. Largely thanks to a fitting but funny comment my best friend blurted out a little too loudly near the end of the film, which caused the whole theater to start laughing. It was silly, but it was an incident that my friends and I would frequently reference for years after that. So I'll admit that I've always thought fondly of this film because of that. Because of the experience, but also because of my friends and just that time in my life. But in preparation for this review, this was my first rewatch of the movie in nearly a decade, and I was kind of surprised by how much I enjoyed it beyond the obvious nostalgia. It's got some issues, mostly stemming from genre conventions of the time period, but it still holds up as a very taut and effective horror movie. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is the premise. I realize this might be something a lot of people disagree with me on, but I think the simplicity of the story works in the film's favor. Two people in an isolated rural house finding themselves the victim of a random violent home invasion after an unexpected knock on their door? It's believable to a certain extent. I mean, I get that the chances of being randomly targeted and terrorized like that are low, but it's still a feasible thing. We're not talking about ghosts or demons or creatures from the Black Lagoon here. We're talking about real people in creepy masks showing up at your door at four in the morning. It's an unsettling premise that works because it could happen. It could happen to your neighbors, to your friends. It could happen to you. The second pro is the sound design. This is a movie that's effective because of its unknown elements. Especially early on in the film, there's an awful lot that we don't see, and even more that the characters don't see. And so sound is a really important part of this film. The knocks and banging on the door, the wind chimes and mysterious metallic scraping outside. It slowly starts to escalate the tension until we reach the extremely unsettling sonic heights of the skipping record scene. But even once we see the strangers that the characters are dealing with, sound still plays a big role, building and then breaking tension throughout the film, right until the very last second of the movie. On the con side, the biggest issue has got to be the dumb character decisions. I realize that this is low-hanging fruit when it comes to a lot of horror movies, but it's hard to get past some of the frustrating choices these two protagonists make, especially when they're separated from one another. Really, some of the things they do just make no sense at all, and almost every time they leave the house, it devolves into pure idiocy. Con number two is less significant of an issue, but is the shaky cam. Throughout the entire movie, the camera's constantly moving. Even in otherwise static shots, it's swaying back and forth in a handheld kind of way. But this isn't a found footage film, and the camera's never representing a character's point of view, like in Black Christmas or Halloween. Instead, it's just a weird stylistic choice. I get what they're going for, trying to make us uneasy, and it does become less noticeable once the strangers arrive and things start getting creepy, but it's extremely distracting before then. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying The Strangers or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy in one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give The Strangers three and a half out of five paws. Apart from some overzealous shaky cam and stereotypically dumb horror movie character decisions, this is an unexpectedly effective home invasion thriller with strong sound design and a simple but believable enough premise that'll make audiences think twice before opening their door. I would recommend The Strangers to fans of tense horror thrillers. There's nothing particularly groundbreaking about this movie, but as a genre film, it more than gets the job done, escalating beyond just creepiness to chaotic terror. 
definitely one of those horror movies that feels like it could feasibly really happen to anybody at any time. If you liked The Strangers, I would recommend Funny Games, specifically the original Austrian version. Although it's slightly less of a home invasion thriller than a psychological horror, it still involves a family being randomly targeted and tortured while at a vacation home. It's a more brutal and less straightforward film, but is based on a scary premise that feels like it could happen to anyone. If you liked the implications of the film being based on a true story and want another creepy masked antagonist, you should check out The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In this case, either the original or a remake would do, but the 1974 version is a slightly bigger inspiration here and is a gruesome tale of murder in rural Texas. And if you'd like another violent movie involving a game of cat and mouse in an isolated house, you might want to watch The Last House on the Left. This is yet another film with a remake, and either would work, but in this particular case, I'd give the recommendation edge to the 2009 remake. This is a bleak and brutal story of violence and revenge that sticks with you long after watching, for many reasons. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen The Strangers? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what was your most memorable theatrical experience and why? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.